Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we'll look at external secrets operator to manage all your secrets inside Kubernetes. So let's dive in. All right, so here's what we'll cover in this video. First, we'll get a general idea of how ESO works. And then we'll look at the most common use case, which is how to pull your secrets from external systems into Kubernetes. After that, we'll see how you can push native Kubernetes secrets to your external secret solution. And finally, we'll wrap up with generators that can dynamically create new set of secret values. And you can find all the resources in the GitHub repo in the description box below. So how does ESO work? If you look at this diagram, it's actually pretty simple. ESO is a Kubernetes operator that connects to your external secret management systems like AWS, Azure, HashiCorp Vault, and so on. It pulls secrets from those external systems and creates native Kubernetes secrets. Your workloads then consume these secrets just like any standard Kubernetes secret. So that's the very basic workflow. Now let's see how to set this up. Okay, so in this demo today, I'll be using Azure Key Vault as our external secret management solution. I've already set this up, and here I have added two secrets, DB username and DB password. And I also have my local Kubernetes cluster running. You can see canines on the right side of my screen. Next, we're going to deploy ESO using Helmshot with its default values which installs all necessary components and CRDs needed for external secrets management workflow. So before ESO can pull secrets, we need to address something called the secret zero problem. The secret zero problem is basically this chicken and egg situation because we want ESO to fetch our secrets from our external system, in this case, Azure Key Vault but ESO itself needs credentials to authenticate with that system. So first, I'll create the secret manually that has the credential to access my Azure Key Vault. Now, if your Kubernetes cluster and secret management system are on the same cloud provider, you probably won't need secret zero and you can use the cloud provider's managed identity service. So for example, if you're running AKS and using the Azure Key Vault solution, you could use Azure Workload Identity to connect to Key Vault. And same goes for other cloud providers as well. But if you're using any other secret management solution outside of your cloud provider, you will need to figure out how do you deliver the secret zero. All right, let's go ahead and create the secret first. Now that we have our secret zero in place, we can create a secret store resource which configures how ESO connects to our external system. We're telling it to use Azure Key Vault as our provider, and we are specifying our tenant ID and the vault URL. The auth secret ref section is where we reference that secret zero we just created, which ESO will use to connect to the Azure Key Vault. So now let's go ahead and also apply this resource. And now we can check the status of our secret store resource in canines. And we can see that it is valid and has successfully connected to our Azure Key Vault. Now we can start pulling secrets from Azure. For this, we need to create an external secret resource. So let's go through the important parts here. The refresh interval is set to 10 seconds, which controls how frequently ESO checks for updates to the secrets in Key Vault. And I've set it to 10 seconds because I want to show you when we update the value in Azure, how it propagates that change into our cluster. The secret store ref field simply points to the secret store we created earlier, which tells ESO which connection credentials to use when accessing our secrets. In the target section, we define the Kubernetes secret called ESO demo secrets that ESO will create and maintain. By setting creation policy to owner, we are telling ESO to fully manage the lifecycle of this secret. It will create it, update it whenever the external secrets change, and automatically removes it if we delete the external secret resource. And finally, in the data section, 
we define the mapping between our Azure Key Vault secrets and our Kubernetes secrets. Here we are instructing ESO to retrieve specific secrets from Azure and store them with the keys, database username, and database password in our Kubernetes secret. So let's go ahead and apply this resource as well. And then we can check the status of our external secret. So everything looks good. It shows that our secret is successfully synchronized. This means ESO has successfully connected to Azure Key Vault, retrieved our secrets, and has created a Kubernetes secret with those values. So let's also check the actual Kubernetes secret that ESO should have created. And if I press X to decode the secret, we can see the database username and password is there, whose values are pulled from Azure Key Vault. So now let's update one of our secrets in Azure. And let's see if ESO can update Kubernetes secret successfully. I'll go ahead and create a new version of this secret and give it a new value. And now let's go back to our cluster. Let's wait for a few seconds and decode the secret again. And here we can see our new value. Perfect. So now let's move on to the next topic. Now let's talk about push secrets, which is a feature I really love. As you can see in this diagram, push secrets work in the opposite direction compared to what we just did. Instead of pulling secrets from an external provider, we are pushing native Kubernetes secret to an external system. So let's say your organization uses GCP for your secret solution. And uh, maybe you want to migrate to a different solution like Azure or HashiCorp Vault or something else. So migrating or taking backup of thousands of secret is not going to be an easy task. With push secret, you can simply configure ESO to pull your secrets from one solution first and then push those same secrets into multiple systems automatically. Another common use case is when you have operators or controllers like Crossplane that dynamically generate credentials inside your cluster, which you may want to store into your external system for better visibility or auditing. All right, let's create a push secret. First, I'm creating a regular Kubernetes secret. This is what we want to push to Azure. In the push secret resource, the secret store ref points to our existing secret store connection. The selector simply tells ESO which Kubernetes secrets to use as the source. And in the data section, we map the source key from our Kubernetes secret to a new secret in Azure. And with the metadata, we can set things like an expiration date and tags in Azure Key Vault. Now let's apply this configuration and see it in action. I'll run the command and give it a moment to process. Perfect. Let's look at our resources. And we can see that the push secret status has changed to synced, which confirms that ESO has successfully created our secret in Azure Key Vault. So let's switch over to Azure Portal, where we should find our newly created secret. And there it is. Notice it includes the expiration date we specified in our configuration. And if we click to view the secret value, we see exactly what we expected. The value has been successfully pushed from our Kubernetes cluster into Azure Key Vault. Now let's move on to our final topic. So what exactly are generators? They allow you to dynamically generate or create secret values instead of just fetching them from somewhere else. This solves a really common problem in enterprise environments, which is secret rotation. Many organizations will have compliance requirements that mandate regular rotation of credentials, maybe every quarter or every year. So you need some way to automate that credential rotation without making your lives miserable. So here we can see all the generators that are available in ESO. As you can see, there are different types like Azure and AWS Container Registry, Password, UUID, etc. 
I do want to mention that there aren't that many available at the moment, so the use case for it is quite limited, but I do hope that they keep adding more in future releases. All right, we'll implement a simple example using the UUID. First, we have to define the UUID generator resource. Next, we have an external secret that references this generator. Notice that instead of using the data field like we did before when we were pulling secrets from Azure, here we are using data from with a generator reference field that points to our UUID resource. I've set the refresh interval to 10 seconds just for the demo purposes, so we can see it generating new UUIDs every few seconds. But in a real scenario, you might want to set it to something more realistic. All right, let's go ahead and create these resources as well. Now, if we take a look at the UUID resource in our cluster, it looks all right. There is not much to see here. Now, let's check our external secret resource. And the status also shows as synchronized, which means ESO has successfully processed it and created the corresponding Kubernetes secret. And here we have our secret and we can see the UUID value if we decode the secret. Now pay attention to the value because every 10 seconds, it's expected to generate a new value. So now I'll go back and decode the secret again. And now it's a different UUID. So the automatic regeneration is working exactly as we expected. This capability becomes even more powerful when you combine it with push secret. And with that, you can automate the full life cycle from secret generation to pushing it to your secret management solution and pulling through ESO. But since there are only few generators available, so we may have to wait for that. But with that, guys, it's the end of the video. Post your questions in the comments below, and I'll see you all next time.